Hey everyone, Dan at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, this is part two of uh, prepping for the winter shelter that I'm going to make. If you guys watched the last episode, you know that I uh, started working on a raised bed. Well, the raised bed is finished. I got all of my, uh, all of my poles cut and laid in here. And I uh, made a change when I when I talked to you guys last time. I had this overhead pole angling down towards my feet. I'll raise this up so you guys can see that. Yeah, I see that overhead pole up there. I had I decided that rather than having it slope down towards my feet, that I was going to make kind of an awning, extend my roof out. A little bit more than what I had uh, originally planned so that I could have some dry space out here in front of the shelter to work in. I could set my pack here, I could do carving projects, whatever. So I'd have an area that extends out past my bed a couple feet that in the rain or whatever would stay nice and dry or snow. And so I went ahead and uh, made that change, raised that pole up. Um, <clears throat> see if you guys can see it here. I took a larger pole here and lashed it to the upper end of the bed. So it's going to basically act kind of like a pillow. Uh, right now I just have my little scout pack laying up here. I was resting my head on it. But when I have tree boughs in here, and uh, like I said, I might cheat a little and use my air mattress. Um, this little pole here, I'll build up some, you know, fir boughs, pine needles, whatever, and it'll act as a natural pillow. And uh, so the bed is done. I put a brace. Let's see if you guys can see right under here on this side. The far pole is thinner than this pole, and it was bowing in the middle just a little bit and tilting my whole bed. So I put a brace right here under this side, so it's good and solid now. And then this morning I have been gathering up um, old dead poles off the forest floor. They're not rotted, they're still good and solid, but they've been laying there for a while. And I've been putting them across, just kind of uh, making a little bit of the framework of what's gonna be my roof. So while you guys are here with me, I thought I'd go ahead and work on that a little more and uh, share a little bit more what I've been doing. Um, just to mention it, I have done all of the work so far uh, using just three tools. My Baco folding saw, which I finally bent the tip on. I don't know how many logs and limbs I've cut with this last year and this year, but uh, finally got a little bit of a bend in the tip, but it has not hindered the performance at all. It's been just uh, working excellent. Um, my Grand's Force Brook hatchet, and of course my SE knives. My hungless, which uh, I also do delimin with if I don't happen to have my hatchet handy, and my little knife for cutting parachute cord and stuff. So, I'll go ahead and work on this for a minute or two and just show you guys uh, what my next step is going to be. Well, I'm going to walk around to the back here. So, give me just a second to get situated. Okay. So the bed is done. Like I said, I got my poles all laid in. Uh, the poles that are laying here on this end are lashed down so the nothing can slide that way. The big pole that I'm using for my pillow is lashed down. And I have a, a wedge uh, in here between the very last little uh, short pole and the trees so that nothing can slide that way. So. When I get some fur boughs laid on there, everything should be good and solid. I guess if I end up on the ground in the middle of the night, I'll know that uh, it's not. So as I said, I've laid in, what, five of these dead poles, kind of giving me a little skeleton uh, for my roof. And I got some here that I'm going to start working across. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that while you guys are on camera. Just kind of show you what I got in mind. 
think. Well, let's see. I'll go just a little higher here for the first one. And yeah, I think that right about in there will work. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to lash this end. This end's over here sitting up against a tree on some branches. So I'll uh, I'll lash that one up in there. There we go. About like so, so it can't go nowhere. And let's see about running one more in here. Yeah, that'll be a nice fit right there. Yeah, that'll work. In fact, I might even bring this one down. Oh, it's gonna have to go right, right in there. Yeah, we're gonna have to lash that one in. Okay, so that'll make a nice, like I said, skeleton here. And I'll put another one down here and then that gives me a place to start weaving um, some tree brows and stuff in and then throw pine needles on top and whatever and I had mentioned before this year I am going to put a tarp in here I haven't decided exactly how I'll do it yet I think I'm gonna go ahead and like I said weave some tree boughs in and some natural material and then maybe just kind of throw a tarp up over the top of the whole thing when it's done and then lay some more tree uh, poles like this, fallen poles and things against the tarp to hold the tarp in place. So it'll be a combination of natural material and a tarp. I want this to stay dry all winter. I'm not gonna use this just one time. I'm gonna be out here, uh, you know, November through March in snow and rain and stuff. And uh, as the tree boughs begin to die and turn brown and a few of them start to fall down in between uh, you know the guy can get a leak or two that's what happened to me last year i had none at the beginning of winter but as time went on i picked up a leak or two so just to avoid that this year like i said i'm going to put a tarp in here and uh, on the inside when it gets real cold i will take an emergency space blanket and tie it up on the inside so that the heat coming from my fire, which will be right where the camera is, is reflected right down on me. But it is coming together really good, guys. It's very comfortable. It, uh, you know, I've laid on it a couple times and it feels good and sturdy. Feels comfortable. Definitely not a one-day project, you know, if it was a real survival situation and I was out here in an emergency, I wouldn't spend the day probably trying to make a raised bed. But then again, you never know. <laughs> but it's been, uh, it's quite a bit of work. I, I don't know that, uh, you know, if I started at sunrise and worked till sunset with all the stuff that needs to be done, I don't know that this could be done in one day. I think I'd be a lot better off just doing emergency shelter on the ground, filling it with debris on the bottom and getting a good fire going. Anyway, guys, just wanted to update you. I'm, like I said, I'm taking my time. Uh, I will probably get the framework finished and decide exactly how I'm going to put in an awning. I, I don't know whether I'm going to build out over the top of these poles or whether I might put a little uh, pole going across out in front that tilts everything down. I'll just kind of see how it develops. And then I'm going to start working on my fire pit. Uh, there is a, it's a little ways from me and I got to pack them in because right here where I'm at, there are no large rocks. So I actually had to pack one up here, but I'm gonna bring in several of these and make a real, real nice reflective fire pit. I'm even considering making something that looks 
a little bit like an outdoor fireplace, just to, just to do something fancy. If I can get enough big rocks where I can make a real high back wall and two sides, uh, it'll almost look kind of like an outdoor fireplace. That's actually what I'm shooting for, but I, I have not yet come across enough large rocks, but I'm willing to pack some in farther if, uh, if it looks like I'm going to be able to do that. Anyway, guys, um, once I get that done, once I get the fireplace done, framework in and stuff, it will pretty much just have to sit here until the uh, winter weather comes. If you try to put tree boughs back and forth, weave them in here and stuff in the summer, uh, they're all going to be brown and dead with needles all over before winter ever gets here. So when we get our first freezing temperatures and I am ready to come stay my first night, get my fire going, we've got fire seasons ended, it's down below freezing, we finally got the fall rains, snow's on the way, then I will get my boughs in, I'll have and, and my tarp in, and light my first fire, and we'll do that. So I probably got one more video, guys, when I get my fireplace um, finished and the framework and everything completely done here. I'll do one more video to show you guys all that. And then we will have to wait until uh, winter to finish this series. Thank you guys for tuning in to Ochoco Bushcraft and take care out there.